So today I'm doing an IG Live on the way that we're reimagining authority, especially from a female perspective. And what I want to do, since I talk about public speaking and how that's such an important piece of communication and leadership, is to talk to you about the ways that women are undermining their authority in the workplace. So number one is to own it. I can't tell you how many times I've had uh, women leaders come to me and say, I called a meeting and nobody showed up, or I called a meeting and no one wanted to come. If you are the leader of a team you and you have the authority to call that meeting, you got to be able to own it. And you're not always going to be popular, but you've got to be able to articulate that I'm somebody that's trying to drive results here. You are an important piece of driving those results, so I need you to be present at this meeting. If you have the authority to resolve personnel problems, if you have the authority to make decisions, you've got to be able to own it as a woman leader. Number two is to know what to say when you don't know the answer. Someone the other day was telling me that they were giving a presentation and someone in the audience asked a question and she didn't necessarily know the answer and she felt like she was being ambushed. I think that there are a number of graceful ways to be able to exit from something like that. What I love to say is, I don't know the answer right now, but I'd love to get your emails, ask somebody in the, in the group to get this person's email so I can get back to you afterwards. Another way to come back is to say, wow, you know, you've given me a lot to think about. I'd love to be able to marinate on that, noodle on that and get back to you. Or the third way is to say, you know what, thank you for raising that. I want to be able to get back to you on that after this presentation. Either way, it is okay to not know the answer and be able to just have the tools or the scripts right at your fingertips to be able to say, I'm not going to let this uh, derail me right now. I am going to come back to you with an answer after I've checked my facts. Number three is don't get angry or upset as a leader. Anger as well as emotion don't necessarily serve you because it tells the other person that you don't have another way to respond. And you absolutely as a leader have those, those tools available to you to be able to respond. So if you're having a tough conversation, let's say with a direct report, be able to be very fact-based. This happened, then this happened, then this happened. And try and get the use out of the conversations. Make it very much about what happened. Number four is stop worrying about being liked. And I get that this is turning around the equivalent of the Titanic. You know, for the longest time, we as women, before we entered the workforce, likability was our only sort of arrow in our quiver. But today, if you are delivering hard messages or if you need to make a decision without everyone's approval, you're not necessarily always going to be liked. And just knowing that and being able to accept that is going to carry you a long way. Your focus should be on being effective. Your focus should be on being respected and sometimes necessarily not being liked. It's kind of like being a parent. And number five is to really pay attention to the tone of your voice. There is a movement underway where I'm noticing a lot of women will end their sentences with a question mark. That's what we're doing, right? Or is that the direction we're going, right? There's this constant sort of upward inflection on every sentence as opposed to being very declarative and saying, this is the direction that we're going to. Make sense? Let me know how that lands. Know that if you sound hesitant or not confident in the, in the ideas that you're presenting, that means it's going to be tougher for you to get buy-in because the rest of the room is going to say, oh, I don't know that she's really confident in what she's talking about. Be comfortable with silence. Gosh, I feel like I teach this in my master class every single time, but you know, we we as human beings are not comfortable with silence. See that? We're not comfortable with silence, but I think as to be an effective public speaker and an effective leader, you've really got to be able to leverage that silence. Be able to step back and allow other people space and time to think and be able to respond. And I think what I observe a lot of times is that a lot of women love to just be able to fill the space with a lot of words because of that nervous energy. But if you can just let things land because you wanna make sure that it has emphasis or you wanna make sure that it has, it drives home the point that you're trying to drive home, you've gotta be able to get comfortable with landing on those pauses and letting it sit. Now, this is something that's going to take a little bit of practice, but if you can do that, you're going to be so much more of an effective speaker, especially when you're leading your teams. All right, we're coming into the last two points. Drop 
the defensiveness. I had a speaker come through the other day. Her name is Tara Moore. She wrote the book Playing Big. And again, she leans back on what our human impulses are. Back in the caveman days, we were primed as human beings to either go into fight or flight, right? Because that meant the difference between survival and death. And so today, our immediate reaction, if we feel like we're under attack or somebody's giving us feedback that's not favorable, is to get defensive. And I love what she had to say about this. Instead of getting defeated hmm, or defensive, fissura, how can you get curious about what was said? I hear you. I hear you say that I didn't spend enough money on this initiative. Could you tell me more about that? Or I hear you saying that I'm being emotional right now, but what did you observe in my character that suggested that? I think that feedback of this nature is a gift when someone gives it to you. And so often most people don't even bother to go that extra step. But if someone is giving you feedback and going that extra step, how can you, instead of getting defeated or defensive, get curious? And then the final piece is to be direct. Uh, so many of us sort of dance around what it is that we're asking. And someone today decided that they weren't going to be coming to my dinner. And I was very direct about it. I said, you know, this is the third time that you have decided that you weren't going to come. And you're, you know, I, I'm coming to support you. I want you to be a more critical member of this community. I value you. I could have danced around the subject, but I was very direct about it. And you know what? She apologized. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to make other arrangements to, in this case, take care of her daughter so that she could be present at the dinner but I called her out on her actions and I was very again going back to one of my previous points I was very fact-based about it I didn't inject a lot of emotion but I did say I was disappointed that this is the third dinner that she wasn't going to be able to make and I was direct about it so again if you are in an authoritative position and if you're in a leadership position it's often going to do you a little more of a favor of being direct about what you want in the way of help direct about what you need in the way of support and direct about what your asks are Hey, I am taking five more private public speaking clients this summer to work with you on how you can command a room with authority. If you would like to sign up for that, just email me at info at joyadas.com and I would love to work with you. And if you would like to take my masterclass for seven corporate women that is kicking up in the fall on September 8th, seven women are going to be in that class and I'm really targeting it for someone like yourself who's in transition. You want to be able to build a personal brand and you're thinking about the stories that you need to tell about your leadership and I'm going to teach you how to not only tell those stories but walk away with six well-practiced ones. Again, you can always email me at info at joyados.com. If you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe down below. I'll get a, you'll get a bell notification every time I upload a new video and I can't wait to see you.